Don't take these off first and then think you can stick it down in. That's not how it works. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Cars. My car is in the garage and we're gonna do some cosmetic stuff to the R today. Now that it has stage one power, I finally wanna start doing some cosmetic things. I've had a lip spoiler for the past year that I have not installed, so I'm gonna look at that again today and decide, do I wanna put it on yet? Reason I've been hesitating is because I'm trying to decide, well, I definitely wanna do it. I wanna get a black roof, but uh, I just haven't really been prioritizing trying to get quotes and talk to wrap companies and this and that to try and get a black roof. I'm also considering a DIY doing it myself as there's not too many curves and I think I could do it. I feel like I have the skills and the time where I could figure that out and patient enough where I could wrap that roof and that would make a really cool video. So I'm gonna mock up the rear wing lip extension and see how that looks today. But I also wanted to do something to the rear of the car, which is gonna be a functional upgrade to the rear bumper, and that's a bumper protection. I use the hatch a lot to load things in and out. Uh, so I have the nice protector here, but a couple times as loading things in and out are pretty heavy, I have grazed this plastic bumper. And I was watching a YouTube video recently by Last Human's Garage, who he also has a white Mark 7, and he had this little bumper protector that looked really nice. Figured out which one it was from his video, and I got the exact same one. This is the Road Sport size A bumper protector. It's a universal fit, and it's black. There's an official one that you can get from Volkswagen, but it's chrome, and on a sporty car, you want less chrome, not more. I'm gonna mock that up, but the one other thing about white cars is rail dust there's one right there so even though this car just came out of the car wash it does have rail dust on it and there's a couple of spots there right on that rear bumper that i would want to get taken off before i stick anything over top so i'm likely going to do some selective clay barring get that cleaned up before we start sticking anything onto the paint now a lot of the clay bar kits uh, come with a spray lubricant that you're supposed to use like a detailing spray shine but you don't need to use that. The best thing is just soapy water, which uh, like use a car soap mixed with water, and then you can just lubricate the area that you want to be clay barring. So get it nice and wet, and then you just start rubbing. And those little uh, rust spots will just get picked out and disappear. The reason why this happens is paint is, is not closed. It's open cell, it's like skin. So things can get stuck in it. And then when they get stuck in it, then they start to rust and that's why you get those little spots. This happens on all paint. The only problem is you can see it on white. So it takes a little bit more maintenance to get rid of those little irony specks. One other thing I have noticed is just kind of a, a car detailing update is I ceramic coated this uh, around this time last year. I only did one coat, but then I've also washed it, maintained it, used the bead maker on top of it. The rear hatch. The rear hatch did not survive through the winter. Like when I put water on this, there's almost no beading at all. Like it's it's all worn off. So I'm gonna have to recoat the rear hatch. The other areas, you know, you can see that that has a coating on it. It's hydrophobic still. You do it on the rear and it's, no. It's like you have no coating at all. So all of the vacuum and dust, the, the, the rear hatch gets sandblasted, right? Because of the way that it works when you're driving. Gets the dirtiest and it wears off the coating really quickly. So if you're ever gonna coat a hatchback car, I recommend doing like two, three, four coats on the rear uh, to make it last a little bit longer. I forget if I mentioned it, but this bumper protector is actually a universal fit product. So it's not directly designed for Mark 7 Golfs, but it's, um, I really like the look of it. I doubt that I'm gonna need warranty registration, but uh, you can register it if you want to. Look at the dirty right out of the package. Okay, it is a stick-on product. This is actually going to adhesive to the bumper, and I just have to make sure that I get it centered. So I'm gonna measure it out, but that's sort of the look that it will give it. I think that's pretty cool. It just, it just flares it up a bit. It's kind of boring, nothing. You add that, boom. I don't know. I dig it because I got to think about what I'm going to do in the future, which will be black wing, black roof, black tint, just a little bit more contrasty bits. I think that's going to look really nice. I need to figure out how to get that centered. I got to measure it out, stick it down. And it's a fairly thick piece, but there's just enough clearance where that's going to work. And then when you stick it down, you want to make sure that you give it enough room so you can clean in this edge. Like you could put it right up 
So I'd recommend mounting it with the hatch closed because if you try to mount it like that and then you close it, it's going to look kind of, yeah, and it hit. So it needs to be back a bit. They want you to wash and then alcohol wipe it. You want to mock it out to make sure that your hatch opens and closes. And then you can get it in a position and start peeling off the tape. You measure a million times, stick once. Trying to get it centered, decide how far in or out do I want it to be. I've been measuring it out. It's around four and a half inches from where the hatch starts to kick up on each side to get that fairly centered. And as well as it's around three inches from the center of that sensor to the edge because trying to line this up with the VW emblem depending on what your what your viewpoint is it was really hard to do that so the only thing next that I want to decide is how far in or out do I want this to be this is hard to see but there is a little curve here and if you push it all the way in then you don't see that curve at all now that would be way too far in but it's kind of a split the difference type thing how far out do I want it to be if I have it in far enough where I cannot see the curve on the corners then this groove is a little bit inconsistent where this one is looks significantly less than this one. So I think I just want to pull it out that little bit. That's where I've got this tape mark. I think that looks the best. My only concern is that that's right at the edge. The edge is kind of right underneath where the hatch is. And I wonder, is that going to be an issue? But overall, I think it looks the best in that position. And I think that's what I'm going to go with. Actually, this is nice. I didn't realize they did this. So this is your little pull tab. So you can you can pull on that and that will allow me to uh, kind of pull out the protection off of the adhesive strip while it's in place. Don't take these off first and then think you can stick it down in. That's not how it works. You want to have that in your position that you need it to be and then you start pulling off the tape while sticking it down as you go along. And you likely can't see it, but part of the reason why I'm doing this is because there is a scuff mark. Oh yeah, you can see it. There's a scuff mark right there. So that's almost chewed through the paint. That little scuff mark there is just loading stuff in and out. And then somehow I've got two chips here. That's a that's a heartbreaker. Those ones I'm not going to be able to cover up. But uh, things like that scuff, I can stop from happening more. I know this is a lot of information about this, but I just wanted to show you tips as I'm going along. So because I'm going to be trying to put the front tape on first, I can't really reach into the back and I don't want to do it with the hatch open. So I've taped down the corners, the back corner where I want them to be so that I can get that little curve that I'm seeing at the very edge where I think it looks better with the curve as well as the spacing between the two ribs is the same front and back. So we're going to do it that way. And now I can start peeling off this tape. Uh, I'm still going to hold it while I do it. So I can't do it on camera. Actually having that tape just holding it in place has made it very easy so I can just go along and I can pull this out and then I can stick it down as I go. I'm trying to not, I'm not putting too much pressure right before the point where I'm pulling it because if it breaks under there that would be bad news. So we're just doing it that way and then I'll stick it down. I did make some small adjustments on this side as it had pushed in a little bit farther than that one but I've got it well now. So pulled that little corner up and now I've got it so it's one centimeter from the crease on the bumper on each side evenly and consistent and straight so now all I have to do is peel off this back one and get that going oh it broke no it broke so I'm now having to hold it up I got to put the camera down all right I was able to grab it before it got stuck down so we're all okay I'm just peeling this off and then I can stick it down in its final resting position. Now I'll go, I'll go over it a bunch of times and then I'll show you the final result. I know it's such a minor thing, but I really, I really like that piece. Stuck in place. It just gives that hatch just a little something. Awesome, now let's see how it looks with the wing on. But I am digging that hatch protector. That is better than anything you can get from Volkswagen. And I've got it pretty much perfectly aligned how I wanted it. So it's perfectly centered. It's got the same distance all along the outer edge. When you look at it, it visually has the same distance of that gap to that gap. Loving it. Shout out to Last Human's Garage where I saw this part from because I would have never found this otherwise. Ops to him, he tries a lot of parts on his car. He's putting new parts in every week and taking them out. I dig it.
that's that's going to be a permanent addition for sure now let's try the wing now this wing is a generic part that i got from china jc sportline but it is a maxton design clone so if you know what that one is well you're going to see it in a second it looks very close to the maxton design version one so as I maybe previously mentioned, I've had this for over a year and I just never installed it because I felt like on a completely stock R it just wasn't fitting. But now that I've got a bit more power, oh, I have to put the own, I have to put my own stickies on. Put these onto the plastic first. I do not remember that being a thing. Goes on here. And then again, it'll be a million different pieces of measuring trying to figure out how I want it to look right. It's not in its final position, but that's kind of where it is. In some angles it looks good, in some angles it looks bad. That's why I have not put it on until now. Just trying to decide what do I really want to do with this thing because of that. But that's the way they all are. I might want to add vinyl. I might want to do the roof black and then all of this black. Or I might just end up deciding after a while that I like that look. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that wing. Man, I like that though. But I'm still not sure about this. Think about it. Mock it up a bit more. Yeah, it just, it looks wrong for some reason. All right, I'm gonna think about it. I may not do this until I get black roof. Cause I don't know. Also, it's really not coming up on camera very well because it's so bright out there and dark in here. I'd have to get it out in the sun to see. Here's the deal with the wing. It is not permanently fixed yet, but um, if you get it in the proper position, and I'm not sure if this is coming up on camera, but you can follow the groove line here. It has a little indentation where you want to follow this around, as well as here. You want to continue this line through. I'm not going to install it yet. I'm not going to install this until I get the roof black. It just doesn't look right. Uh, it'll look quite good once I get a black roof on. We tie black mirrors, black roof, black spoiler. Right now, it just looks like a weirdly stuck on piece that doesn't really flow with any of the other design. And then this is what it looks like from behind. Now, one interesting thing is that on the non-Spectrum cars, uh, this is black under here. And on, I believe on the Spectrum cars, this is body colored. So that will make it look a little bit different too, where, ah, I don't know. But this is black, white, and then black again. That also looks a little weird. I'm not sure if I would want to have black wrapped right under that lip or not. I have to think about that too when it comes time to do it. All right guys, so that's probably going to end this video then. I love that piece. This, not so much. We're going to save that until after. Or, you know, I may end up deciding that I really don't want it at all once I get a black roof on. And I may decide that I just want to have a black roof. So we'll do that first, black roof, and then decide what I want to do with this guy. Alrighty guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button if you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. It's really the first kind of major cosmetic modification that I've done to this car so far, because I'm still waiting on tint and all this other stuff that I've had planned for a well over a year and haven't done yet. But that's, it looks a little bit much from that angle. But from back here, when you look at it like that, now you can actually have the black on the black sandwiches that nicely. I like it.